welcome. This lesson is about how to get better at guitar. We're going to look at what the leading experts on the science and psychology of practicing have to say about how to get past plateaus, how to practice more effectively, and really how to get better at anything. So of course, we can use that advice for how to get better at guitar. I'm going to talk about why we hit plateaus in the first place and stop making progress. And I'll point out a couple things that we're probably doing in our practicing that are wrong. Then I'll share a series of quotes from the leading psychologist on the science of improvement and practicing and expertise. And lastly, I'll share my takeaways from all this information and distill it into a simplified piece of advice for you on how to get better at guitar. <laughs> I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a lot about music theory and mapping out the fretboard and song learning and practice strategies and really a wide variety of topics, but all designed to help us get more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. So I have good news, bad news, and then more good news again. The first good news is that if you start practicing something new, you are going to see improvement very rapidly. The bad news is that pretty soon after that, you are almost certainly going to hit a plateau and stop making progress. And the other good news is that there are ways to get through plateaus, to keep improving, and to prevent them in the first place, ways that have been studied by super smart people, and we should listen to those people. One such person is Anders Ericsson. He was the world's leading psychologist on the science of practice and expertise. So to help us figure out how to get better at guitar more efficiently, more effectively, to prevent us from getting stuck, I'm going to pull some quotes from Erickson's book called Peak Secrets from the New Science of Expertise. First, we need to just acknowledge the fact that you do not continue to get better at something just because you're doing it more, even if you're doing it a ton. When you first start doing anything, there is a certain challenge, right? You kind of have to figure it out, even if it's a simple thing. You have to think, what, how does this work? Um, so by being challenged, you are improving rapidly. But the science shows, the research shows that as soon as you can do something to at like a functional level, to an acceptable level to, to make it work for whatever goal that you're you're going after, you stop making progress right then because you stop being challenged. And our brains are evolved to conserve calories as much as possible and figure out shortcuts and you know the, um, an amazing function, right? To categorize things and, and simplify everything as much as possible to get to that point quickly, as quickly as it can, to stop being challenged because thinking c creates or expends so much energy. Uh, that we want to get to that point of like, oh, cool, I know how this works now. You know, it becomes a formula, it becomes a routine, it becomes a habit, um, that kind of thing. So if you are not challenged anymore, you stop making progress, period. So one of the quotes from the book here, the first quote I want to share, he says, research on many specialties shows that doctors who have been in practice for 20 or 30 years do worse on certain objective measures of performance than those who are just two or three years out of medical school. It turns out that most of what doctors do in their day-to-day -day practice does nothing to improve or even maintain their abilities. Little of it challenges them or pushes them out of their comfort zones. So someone who's working, I mean, if they're working full time practicing um, medicine, and this applies to every skill, uh, every job, every, you know, everything, if you're doing something a bunch, but you are not getting out of your comfort zone, you are not challenging yourself, you are not having to think in new ways um, you simply not only stop improving, you, your abilities will actually start declining. So it probably seems obvious now, why do plateaus happen? Plateaus happen because the natural um, need to figure something out that's new, the natural challenge that is embedded in figuring out something new and working on something new and getting it to that kind of acceptable functional level, when that stops being a challenge, there you go, you have a plateau. So it is our job as um, intentional practicers to improve, to be improving at something. We need to create that novel challenge at any given point. That's why on this channel, I talk so much about um, what I call repetition with manipulation. You want to repeat something a lot to practice it, but how can you think of it differently? How can you do it somewhere else on the fretboard? How can you do it on a different string set, different position, you know, map it out this way, map it out this way um, it, in terms of uh, mapping out structures or scales or it really works for anything a lick or something like that so that's why i talk so much about that to to truly internalize something i 
I'm scared of ever, you know, something becoming an automatic habit because then I feel like I'm not really connected to expressing um, something, art hopefully artistically with it, right? Emotional expression rather than just um, I'm, I'm worried about, I'm paranoid about just like some kind of automatic thing that I might be doing on the guitar without feeling connected to it in a, in a really intentional, um, controlled way way. So repetition with manipulation, this idea of how else can I know this? Where else can I play this? Now, we naturally avoid this behavior because it is uncomfortable, it is hard, it's it is putting ourselves into a situation where we're out of our comfort zone, but that is what that's the only way we improve. That's the only way we improve. And nobody finds it um, comfortable. It can be fun. It can be stimulating. It can be exciting, but it's exhausting. You know, when you're really doing that, it's totally exhausting. Uh, so here's the other quote. Here's the next quote I want to share from Anders Ericsson. When you first start learning something new, it is normal to see rapid or at least steady improvement. And when that improvement stops, it is natural to believe you've hit some sort of implacable limit. So you stop trying to move forward and you settle down to life on that plateau. This is the major reason that people in every area stop improving. We need to really listen to this stuff. There is a lot of what sometimes is referred to as a fixed mindset out there where we feel like, oh, I, I can do that or I can't do that naturally. Um, and a lot of what Anders Ericsson's research showed is that that is just not a thing. That if you believe that you can't do something, the reason that you actually create that as a self-fulfilling prophecy is that you don't um, continue to challenge yourself to try to say, well, how else can I think of it? How, you know, what else is possible? Um, so if we believe, okay, I should be able to do this, what is it going to take? We'll keep challenging ourselves. And this is what the science is showing. This is not just some motivational speaking, um, you know, inspirational piece of advice. It's something that is that it's, insp it's inspiring to say like, you can do it, but, um, but it's really, it's really real. It's really been researched. So one of the takeaways from that quote is just don't assume you've hit some sort of skill limit. Don't assume that ever, never. Now, when you get to that plateau point and you feel like you stopped improving, don't think, oh, this must be how good I'm able to be at this thing, because that is not real. So one of the subjects that uh, Anders Ericsson was studying in his research was someone named Steve who was working on their memory capacity. They were trying to remember um, a series, how long of a series of digits of numbers can they hold in their memory? And what does it take um, to get to the absolute limit of what maybe a human is capable of uh, retaining in their memory and what skills and, and practice strategies are needed um, to work on that or get pl past plateaus. So the next quote I want to share is from when Steve um, hit a limit where they were wondering, well, is this the limit? Is this the, is this the limit of ability? Um, you know, hit a plateau, really hit a plateau and was not able to get forward. And they discovered that it wasn't about his uh, overall memory hitting a limit. It was that he was stumbling on just a couple spots in this string of numbers, a couple specific digits. And so they figured out this way of, oh, if you can figure out what those are, then go and address those problems. And suddenly you're going to have more room to keep expanding your skill set. So this quote, after they discovered that problem says his problem was not that he had reached the limit of his memory, but rather that he was messing up one or two groups of digits in the entire string. That's going to come in handy in a second. We're going to talk more about what that means for our practicing. The next quote I want to share says what we learned from Steve's experience holds true for everyone who faces a plateau. The best way to move beyond it is to challenge your brain or your body in a new way. Bodybuilders, for instance, will change the types of exercises they are doing, increase or decrease the weight they're lifting or the number of repetitions and switch up their weekly routine. Actually, most of them will vary their patterns proactively so they don't get stuck on plateaus in the first place. Cross training of any sort is based on the same principle. Switch off between different types of exercises so that you are constantly challenging yourself in different ways. I know that's reiterating a lot of what we already talked about, but the challenging yourself in different ways uh, is the way to prevent plateaus and to get through plateaus. I love this idea of cross training. You know, you're always doing all kinds of different movements and different exercises, switching it up all the time. Uh, we to think of our practicing a little more like cross training in the future if we can instead of the kind of same repetition over and over and over so the next quote i want to share is more about finding 
those weak links in our playing or in our practicing because we don't need to necessarily we, we especially don't want to be working on something that we already have down if there's something else that's really holding everything else back so this next quote says any reasonably complex skill will involve a variety of components some of which you will be better at than others thus when you reach a point at which you are having difficulty getting better it will be just one or two of the components of that skill not all of them that are holding you back the question is which ones to figure that out you need to find a way to push yourself a little not a lot harder than usual this will often help you figure out where your sticking points are so in our own practicing oh, this is so true are we going to go back to the beginning of a piece of music and just repeat it from the top all the way to the end and be frustrated when we don't play you know it perfectly or to our standards or are we going to find the one little spot the couple measures or something that really um, are the things that we're tripping over if we can then go and make those stronger make those a strength uh, we are saving a lot of time it's a very straightforward way to think of it in practicing for sure but the big challenge is certainly how do you figure out what those things are so what anders ericsson is suggesting here is that you push yourself just a little bit beyond your limit and pay attention to what breaks down when you do that what breaks down first what are you what do you mess up on first so there's so many ways to do this but tempo could be one on the guitar let's say you're playing something and nice and slow and clean you can you can do it as you speed up the tempo it's not just a matter of you know speeding up the tempo and playing the whole thing over and over again as you speed it up what spots are the first ones to go wrong to go bad right then you identify oh okay those are my weak points right but there's that that's a very simplistic way to look at it and that really works for like material but we need to think this way with okay even within that what even within that hard spot what's causing the problem is it my the technique of my pinky is it the pull-off i was doing is it you know the right hand tone is it the just the time feel um there's so many components but we do need to try to identify what is the actual thing that is tripping me up so a lot of teaching a lot of private teaching um, guitar lessons is th the biggest thing i do is help people find those things right it's not obvious to us when we're practicing so you know if someone's having a hard time like oh well i figured out this is actually the thing that's causing a problem now we create an exercise to take care of that and then i've seen it over and over again once we create an exercise to take care of that one little thing which might be like oh i practice this so much and the thing that actually was holding it back was like missing a string with the right hand and they're practicing you know thinking the left hand is what is what the issue is well once that thing gets cleared up the, the correct thing that's going to solve it you just like blast past that right then you just start making progress again um and um it's really uh, inspiring and incredible to see so we're going to keep these things in mind it's not straightforward it's not easy once we know you know what we're talking about in this video once we know this information about practice strategy and the science of this it doesn't mean we can just automatically do it but we can at least keep it top of mind of say that's our goal you know the, the, uh, these kinds of um this this type of awareness and constant investigation in what's uh holding us back in our playing uh, is is at least our goal so here's a quote from Erickson that basically sums up what I just said what you should try when other techniques for getting past a plateau have failed first figure out exactly what is holding you back what mistakes are you making and when push yourself well outside your comfort zone and see what breaks down first then design a practice technique aimed at improving that particular weakness designing your own exercises de designing your own practice techniques very specifically aimed at these um, weaknesses that we are figuring out from paying attention to to what is breaking down first it's the best possible skill you can have better than any guitar skill is this skill of identifying what the problem is and then creating something on the spot creating your own exercise not going and looking for one but knowing like well i know this is the problem so what if i practice it this way to get that problem down and honestly if you can do that like i said that's mostly what i do when i'm teaching right so it's a very very valuable thing so here's another quote that adds to that the power of this technique is that it targets those specific problem areas that are holding you back rather than trying this and that and hoping that something works this technique is not widely recognized even among experienced teachers even though it might seem obvious as described here and is a remarkably effective way to rise above of plateaus so very interesting that this is not widely recognized or adopted even though when we talk about it it is very obvious usually the way practicing is happening is what is described here as uh trying this and that and hoping that something works so that is very much our default kind of practicing until we start to 
get this other skill down that we're talking about. So final takeaways here are one, repetition with manipulation. You need to repeat to practice something, but how many ways, what can you focus on? How can you do it in other ways? Um, and somewhere else on the guitar, another uh, play it in another key, you know, that, that this is the way that we're working on um, how the music works and internalizing our control over it. And it could be a technique thing too, or whatever, but repetition, yes, with manipulation because we need to keep ourselves challenged. So whatever you can do to keep yourself challenged, what's gonna happen eventually is that we gain kind of a craving for the challenged feeling. Like it doesn't feel right to be practicing if there's not something that we're kind of like striving to um, fix. The other thing I wanna say is just design your exercises. And we already talked about pinpointing the exercises to, to solve a specific problem, but very, very important, design your exercises to have very strict and specific parameters, very strict and specific rules that you have to follow. So if if your rule is, okay, I have to play this three times in a row at this tempo without buzzing any notes. Like that's so specific. If you buzz a note, it's gonna be, you're gonna know that happened. Um, if you don't get it to that tempo, you know, it's really clear. So it gives you a thing to strive for. You need to know when you got it wrong and when you got it right, like without a question, it can't be vague, right? So another thing is like, okay, I'm gonna improvise. I wanna improvise through this, this chord progression and I'm only allowed to play chord tones three and five, right? It's not gonna be an amazing solo, but it tests your musicianship skill. It, it exercises that muscle. Right. So it's just like, OK, I'm going to do this, you know, weightlifting exercise for this muscle or whatever. You know, you, you want to target um, that specific skill. So parameters with super specific rules. And then as you're practicing, manipulate the rules like, OK, now I'm going to improvise with chord tones um, seven and one only. Or now I'm going to uh, can I do this in a three, four time signature instead of four? I mean, the options are completely endless. It depends on what your goals are in the moment. But uh, specific rules and parameters that you have to follow to test your actual fitness in the moment. So for example, if you're working on scales on the guitar and you want to be able to improvise with them, but when you play a solo, it just sounds like you're playing a scale up and down, right? And like, how are you ever going to get to playing kind of seeing the whole scale and jumping around to notes and doing things more interesting me melodically if you don't ever practice it that way? That's why I made a free PDF uh, download uh, exercise sheet that is the top three pentatonic scale patterns uh, for improvising on the guitar to get solo sounding more melodic and less like scales. So that's just a good example. And it's a free giveaway that I always have. Uh, and I'll put that link in the description below. You can download that. Just have a nice little exercise in front of you that breaks up the notes. Um, so you're actually able to see that scale form um, in its entirety and jump around to things more melodically than just playing the scale form up and down. And you'll see the way it's written out. It's like, okay, can you play it this way with this melodic pattern up and down? The rules are super specific whatever kind of um, sequence of notes instead of just hoping that we play something cool uh, when we're playing the scale. So big, big, big question for you. In what area of your playing anything have you hit a plateau? Have you stopped making progress? Have you feel, been feeling stale about? That's part one of the question. Part two, what do you think is the weak spot that's causing the plateau? What is the thing that it actually needs to be worked on? Part three of the question is what do you think you can do? to get through that. So this is this is the real work right here. And I'm asking you to put that in the comments, right? Think about it. What's something you need to break through? What's causing that uh, limitation, that plateau? What's the specific thing? And then therefore, what's an exercise you could do to get through that and then try it out? It's going to work. It's gonna work. So put that in the comments. If it if it does work, if you go try it, you know, let me know also what the results were because it's very exciting. It's a different way of practicing if we haven't been doing this before. And if you genuinely like this lesson on how to get better at guitar and practice strategies, please hit that like button. It really makes a difference. Uh, it helps the video, helps the channel, and and most importantly, helps other people find the stuff that they're looking for to continue to make improvement on their instrument. Like-minded people like us. So that really means a lot if you like this video. And I put out a new lesson every week. So stay tuned for next week. I'm going to do a little demo walkthrough of one of my favorite free online tools for creating fretboard diagrams. So that's going to be fun. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.